I'm Dr. Mike Murphy. I have a PhD in computer science, and I teach computer science and information systems at Coastal Carolina University. In this video, I'm going to work through some network transfer speed calculation examples, showing you how to solve for network transfer times, average transfer speed, and total amount of data transferred. I'll also do some network comparisons. So I'm going to do four examples here. The first one I'm going to calculate transfer time given the amount of data to transfer and the average transfer speed. The second example I'll calculate the average transfer speed given the amount of data to transfer and the transfer time. Third example I'll calculate the amount of data transferred given a transfer speed and a transfer time. In the fourth example I'm going to compare two options for moving data to different networks and see which network would be faster for the given task. So recall from the prior lecture that we have these three relationships that we can work with. Our transfer time is equal to the amount of data that we want to transfer divided by our average transfer speed. If we're given our average or our amount of data to be transferred and our average transfer time instead of the speed we can solve for the speed using this equation. And finally, if we're given a time and a speed, but we need to figure out how much data we've transferred, we can use this third equation here. OK, so let's start with the first example. And the question in this example is, how long does it take to transfer a 2 gigabyte file at 10 megabits per second? This is a fairly standard, fairly typical type problem we deal with in networking. Remember that our operating system is going to tend to give us file sizes in base2 prefixes, or IEC prefix quantities, so mebibytes, or gibibytes, or tebibytes, whereas our network speeds are going to use base10 quantities, in this case 10 megabits. So we're going to have to deal with these prefixes, and we're also going to have to deal with the fact that here we have bytes in this quantity, and we have bits in this quantity. So let's look at the information that we've given. We've been told that we have a 2 gigabyte file. Okay, this is a quantity of data. So we're going to uh, set A equal to this. This is the amount of stuff that we need to transfer, or the amount of data we need to transfer, which is 2 gigabytes. We're told a speed at which we can transfer it, 10 megabits per second. So this is our S, or our speed. and we need to figure out how long it's going to take to accomplish this transfer. So we're going to solve for t. That means we need to use our first formula, t equal a over s. So let's start by setting up the equation. We're going to say that t is equal to 2 gigabytes divided by 10 megabits per second. We're just plugging in the values we were given for a and s. Okay, well, we can't just immediately calculate this because we have these prefixes and bits and bytes to deal with. So let's start by doing what we can do. And one simple thing we can do is since we have 2 over 10 here, we can divide both our numerator and our denominator by 2 and get this to 1 over 5. So 1 gigabyte of data over 5 megabits per second is going to take the same amount of time as 2 gigabytes at 10 megabits. This is just going to make the math a little bit easier when we go to plug it into the calculator. The next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of bytes or get rid of bits, one of the two. Now in this particular case I felt that it was easier to multiply the numerator by 8 to change the big B into a little b. Uh, because there are 8 bits in a byte. I could just as easily have divided the denominator by 8, but it was easier multiplying 8 by 1 than it was dividing 5 by 8, so I chose to take care of the numerator. And when I did this, the bits, we can think of the bits as actually canceling out. And uh, this is pretty neat, because we can, we can treat the bits as if they're a variable and cancel them, and that makes our math a little bit easier. The next thing we need to do is we need to recognize that, first of all, per second means that we actually have 5m over s in the denominator. 
And whenever, whenever we have another denominator inside the denominator of a fraction, what ends up happening is that denominator pops up and becomes the base unit. It actually goes into the numerator, but we consider it to be the base unit. So 1 divided by per second is actually seconds. It gets rid of the per second and just returns that into seconds. So that becomes our unit. Now what we need to do is a basic calculation substituting in numbers for our IEC and SI prefixes. In the numerator, I have a Gibby, which is 2 to the 30th. And in the denominator, I have a mega, which is 10 to the 6th. So what I'm going to do now is pop up my calculator. And I'll take 8, multiply that by 2 to the 30th. And I get this number. And then I'm going to divide it by 5 times 10 to the 6, which is 5 million, or 5 followed by 6 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and I get 1717.9869184, or about 1718. So the result of the computation is that this transfer is going to take about 1718 seconds. Now, one useful thing to remember is that there are 3600 seconds in an hour and 1800 seconds in a half hour. So 1718 is just shy of half an hour. <coughs> Okay, so that's a transfer time. Let's look at another example. In this example, we're going to try to calculate our average transfer speed. We're told that we're given a 250 mebibyte file and that it transfers in three minutes. So what's the average transfer speed? Okay, we're given a quantity of data, in this case an amount, an A, of 250 mebibytes. We're given a transfer time of three minutes, and so we want to solve for S. We want to solve for our transfer speed. So we're going to use this equation. This is our second equation. Now, pay attention to the units. Remember, we have 250 mebi, so that's a base 2 IEC prefix, bytes here, and we're going to give our speed in megabits, little b, per second, and mega is of course a base 10 quantity. Notice also that this problem has told us our transfer time in minutes, but we need to report our speed in megabits per second. So we're going to need to convert minutes to seconds somewhere along the line, in addition to converting bytes to bits and getting rid of our prefixes, and then putting a prefix back on when we're done. Alright, so let's set this up. Our speed we're just going to plug these in to begin with. It's 250 mebibytes, the amount of stuff we want to transfer, divided by the transfer time, in this case three minutes. So, the first thing I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to multiply my numerator by eight, and I'm going to convert a big B, bytes, into a little b, bits. And so if I multiply 250 times eight, I get 2,000. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the denominator by 60 to convert the 3 minutes into 180 seconds because I need my final speed to be in megabits per second, not megabits per minute. So 3 minutes is equivalent to 180 seconds. Then I need to get rid of this mebi up here because right now I have mebi bits and so I'm going to need to get rid of the mebi because I'm going to need my final answer to have mega. I'm going to get rid of the IEC quantity, the base 2 quantity, and I'll report my final answer using a base 10 or SI quantity. So I'm going to multiply 2000 times 2 to the 20 over 180, and this is going to give my result in bits per second. So let's pull up the calculator again, clear out our previous calculation. We'll multiply 2000 times 2 to the 20th, and we get this number here, and we're going to divide this by 180. So we get this number. Now this is bits per second. Okay, We're not finished yet. We have given a transfer speed in bits per second, but the question asks the speed in megabits per second. 
Now, to get that quantity from bits per second to megabits per second, we need to divide by 10 to the sixth, or we need to divide by 1 million. So if I divide this quantity by 1 million, I'm going to see that my result is 11.65 megabits per second. Now, in networking, we typically give somewhat round numbers. We don't tend to say, well, this is 11.65 megabits per second, because the technologies that we work with really aren't that precise. We do have errors. We do occasionally have issues uh, that cause our speeds to fluctuate up and down. So we're going to say, instead of 11.65 megabits per second, we're just going to round this and we're going to say, hey, this is about a 12 megabit per second link. That's close enough for government work. That'll get us close to the true speed of the link, plus or minus, because everything has a certain degree of error uh, when we're dealing with this type of technology. Okay, so there's a transfer speed calculation, and this is an average speed. If you were actually to transfer this file at this speed, you would see the file doesn't transfer at the same speed for the entire duration of the transfer. That's completely normal, completely expected for reasons that we'll see later on in the course. Uh, so realize that this is a broad average speed, not an instantaneous speed. Okay, moving on to our next example. How much data, and we want to measure this in mebibytes, can be transferred in 20 seconds if we have a transfer speed of 1 gigabit per second. So how much data can we transfer at 20 seconds the speed of 1 gigabit per second? All right, if you're thinking that the answer is, oh, 20, well, that is true. You can transfer 20 gigabits of data in 1 second, or I'm sorry, in 20 seconds at 1 gigabit per second. That is true. The problem is the question's asking for the data in mebibytes. So we need to do some unit conversion and, and prefix conversion here in order to get the correct answer. So we're given our speed, 1 gigabit per second. We're given our time, 20 seconds. We're solving for the amount of data we need to transfer. That's this simple equation here. We would simply take the transfer time, multiply it by the speed. So we're going to multiply 20 seconds by 1 gigabit per second and we see that we get 20 gigabits of data transferred. Now, the seconds and the per seconds, you can think of these as canceling out uh, each other, because if you have 20 seconds and 1 gigabit per second, the resulting quantity, the resulting unit, is going to be a gigabit. Of course, we want maybe bytes, so we need to get 20 gigabits into maybe bytes. <coughs> now, I've chosen here to divide this quantity by 8 first, and by dividing the quantity by 8, I get from gigabits to gigabytes. Now, of course, this is SI prefix, so this is 10 to the 9 bytes. So if we take 20, divide it by 8, we get 2.5 gigabytes. We can get rid of our giga with the 10 to the 9. And then, in order to get to our final answer, what we need to do is we need to take our 2.5 times 10 to the 9, and there is actually a key on my calculator that will make this faster, I'm just being explicit, and we need to divide this amount by 2, we wanted mebibytes, so we want to divide it by 2 to the 20. And you can see here we have 2384, uh, again rounding, mebibytes. Okay. So in 20 seconds, at a speed of 1 gigabit per second, we can transfer about 2384 mebibytes, not quite 2400. All right, so let's move on to our final example. This example requires us to make a judgment call. We have two pebibytes. So this is a big data set. This is a kind of a big scientific data set. And we have this data set on a set of hard disk drives. Now, at the time that I'm making this recording, we don't actually have a data set this big or a set of hard disks big enough at Coastal to store this amount of data. 
but someday we probably will. We need to transfer this data from Conway, from the university campus, to a data center in Columbia, our state capital. This is a distance of about 150 miles or so, and uh, we have a 10 gigabit link that we can use to transfer it. Uh, failing that, we can load all our disks into a truck and drive them to Columbia. It's about two and a half hours, plus or minus, depending on traffic and depending on whether we get stuck in a traffic jam if we go the interstate. So is it faster to transfer the data over the network link, or is it faster to drive the data to Columbia? All right, well, let's do the calculation. Let's find out. So we're given an amount of data, in this case, two pebibytes, and we're given the speed, 10 gigabits. So we need to solve for the time. That's going to be this equation here. Time is equal to the amount of stuff we want to transfer divided by the speed at which we can transfer it. If our result is close to or around or less than two and a half hours, then we'll use the network link. Otherwise, if the result is much greater than two and a half hours, we'll recommend using the sneaker net approach. We'll recommend driving the hard disks to Columbia. So let's see what we get. Set up the equation. Again, I'm just plugging in the values here. Two pebibytes over 10 gigabits per second. Much as I did with our first, uh, with our first example, um, I, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and divide out by two. Now, notice that I copied and pasted from the first example, so there should be a p here. This should be pebby and not gibby. And I fixed it on this slide. Uh, <clears throat> Once again, I multiplied through by 8, so I got rid of the big B, I got rid of the bytes, replaced them with bits, and of course we can cancel those out. So I have 8 pebbies over 5 gigas per second. Now we need to get rid of the prefixes and do our calculation. So we're going to bring up our calculator, clear out the previous calculation, multiply 8 by 2 to the 50th for PEBI. And our calculator gives us the answer in scientific notation, so this is already not a good sign. So this is 9.007199, etc., 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 times 10 to the 15th. So let's go ahead and divide this by 5. And we get 1.801439 and so on times 10 to the 15th. Now we want to divide this by 10 to the 9. So we want to divide this by 1 followed by 9 zeros or a billion. Okay, and we get this number uh, 1,801,439 seconds. Okay, or, or rounding, 1,801,440 1, seconds. Okay, um, this is a pretty big number. Let's see here. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour. Okay, so this is going to take 500 hours. So already I can see that this transfer is going to take 500 hours, and I can drive the disks in two and a half. This is already not looking good. Uh, let's divide this by 24 and see how many days this is. It's going to take about 21 days to transfer this data if we use our network link. Okay, so that's that's a long time. So I think this calls for a road trip. We're going to load our disks into the back of this extremely poorly drawn pickup truck, and uh, but it's okay because we don't have vehicle inspections in South Carolina anymore, and uh, we're just going to drive it across the state. And um, with a truck like this, hopefully we don't lose any drives along the way. But this is the kind of example. This is the kind of situation, incidentally, where a sneaker net is actually faster at moving a particular quantity of data than a, than a regular electronic network. This is also an example of how we can do these calculations to make judgments about which type of network that we're going to use for a given situation. So, we can apply our basic formulas to calculate transfer time, speeds, and quantities. Given any two of these things, we can calculate the third. But in doing so, it is important to pay attention to the SI and IEC prefixes. And it's especially important to know when you're dealing with an SI or IEC prefix. In Microsoft Windows in particular, and Mac OS X for that matter, whenever you see 
a file size reported in the operating system, it might say MB or GB. And you might be tempted to think megabytes or gigabytes in base 10. In reality, though, they should be MIB and GIB because what it's actually reporting are IEC prefixed quantities, mebibytes and gibibytes. Transfer speeds, the information that you're going to get from your internet service provider or any networking equipment vendor, is always going to be base 10. All your speeds are always going to use SI prefixes. So it's important to know which sets of prefixes you're dealing with, some of which may depend on the context of the situation, and make the appropriate calculations with those prefixes. Don't forget to change bytes to bits and bits back to bytes when needed. And remember to pay attention to the required units needed for the answer. If your ISP is going to sell you speeds in gigabits per second, make sure that your calculation, that the answer that you give when you're going to purchase that data, or when you're putting in uh, answers to exercises for the class, that you have the units correct, and that if you're asked for gigabits per second, that you give gigabits per second. If you're asked for mebibytes, that you give mebibytes, and so on. Make sure your units are correct. So attention to detail is critically important when doing these calculations. Thank you for watching. For more information, including additional lectures, please visit my website at www.mikemurphycs.com. Due to a high volume of email, I am unable to respond to questions that are not from Coastal Carolina University students. For admissions information, please visit www.coastal.edu. This lecture is copyright 2014, Dr. Mike Murphy, and is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License.